situation is that there's only a single planet that we know of that actually harbors life. So we're constrained in our thinking about what constitutes life by what we know on Earth. And surprisingly enough, we know actually quite little. Uh, we know about the three domains of life on Earth and that uh, life probably originated uh, at once as, uh, and a, there's a single genetic code and all of the diversity of life that we see uh, are based on uh, this uh, single genetic code. Uh, we don't really know very much about evolution uh, in the early stages, and by the early stages, I would say the first half of the history of our planet. And particularly confounding has been the fact that uh, there's been a tremendous amount of lateral gene transfer, and uh, that has confounded our understanding of evolutionary processes. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of evolution during this time, and most of the metabolic processes have evolved during this time, including oxygenic photosynthesis, methanogenesis, uh, all sorts of respiration, uh, phototrophy, and probably the most fundamental uh, biological process, which is chemiosmotic coupling. Uh, all of these processes require pigments, uh, and uh, there are a number of uh, different pigments, uh, and the ones that I'm going to talk about primarily are the uh, carotenoids, and in particular, uh, retinol, the visual pigment. Uh, also, I'll, I'll uh, compare them to uh, flavins and, and porphyrins. One of the main questions that we have in our mind is, in an evolutionary sense, when did these different pigments arise? Because if some of the pigments arose earlier than others, then we should be aware of that as we uh, search for uh, biosignatures elsewhere. So <clears throat> the other hypothesis that I keep in mind is that Generally speaking, life has evolved from simplicity to complexity. And uh, the uh, beta carotene, and particularly its oxidative uh, product, uh, retinol, are two of the simplest uh, pigments. Flavins, which are involved in respiration processes in many organisms, is also relatively simple compared to what are the porphyrins, which are involved in a wide variety of processes and are uh, some of the most uh, uh, interesting uh, pigments out there. Uh, so if you look at the uh, spectra of these different pigments, especially the chlorophylls versus the retinols, the chlorophyll pigments, of, their, of which there are a variety which are tuned to specific environments, as we'll hear about in the next talk, uh, have two uh, absorptions. Uh, maxima, one in the blue and one in the red, uh, and therefore the color green is observed. Uh, in the case of the retinal pigments, there's a single peak, uh, which is in the green region, and therefore those pigments are purple. The uh, retinal pigments, the prototype Bacteroidopsin, is the, uh, uh, the simplest biological system for energy transduction. So again, uh, we think that these may have evolved very early. It's a single protein with a single chromophore. It uh, is a light-driven proton pump, and it generates a proton motive gradient, and that proton motive gradient can uh, be used for uh, ATP synthesis and a wide variety of other bioenergetic processes. So the organisms, the extreme halophiles, or halophilic archaea, are uh, a very uh, nice system in terms of biosignatures to be thinking about retinal pigments and carotenoids. So uh, I think many of you have seen these ponds in uh, South San Francisco Bay, which are uh, highly saline. The uh, airplane, uh, when it lands in San Francisco, generally flies over, uh, at least when you're coming from the East Coast, over these ponds. And these ponds have been the subject of much interest over the years. Uh, the ponds are of different colors uh, depending on the types of organisms and their salinities, and they are, some of them are red, uh, orange, or, or purple. Uh, the JPL uh, Avirus uh, collection has uh, actually uh, kept 10 years of data on those ponds, and uh, the, uh, the ponds are uh, 
differing by the uh, concentration of salt from uh, about 20 ppt to over 350 ppt, very close to saturation. Uh, so if you look at the uh, reflectance spectra in these ponds, uh, you can see uh, absorption for the carotenoids and BR. Uh, you can also see uh, absorption for chlorophylls. Uh, however, uh, the carotenoids and BR are, are much more prevalent in the highest salt concentrations. And the, the uh, concentration of cells in these ponds is extremely high. It's maybe 10 to the 11th cells per mil. So we think that this is a pretty good uh, system to think about uh, developing a, a way to assay for uh, biosignatures in this, re in this range. <clears throat> so these organisms are growing in extremely saline uh, brine. And I think you could see the, the cells between the, the uh, salt crystals. Uh, the cells can actually survive desiccated in the salt crystals. And uh, when you plate them, uh, you see uh, highly pigmented colonies. And one can also observe many mutants. And that's been our approach. OK, so our approach to studying these uh, halobacterial pigments has been the isolation of pigment mutants. Uh, then we did characterization both biochemically and genetically. And uh, in the recent years, we have just been able to sequence the whole genome to analyze them. Uh, and then we've also done some spectroscopic analysis, <coughs> both absorption and reflection, uh, and characterized uh, different uh, genes and pathways. So I want to share with you some of the data that we've uh, accumulated on these. So the carotenoid uh, and retinal biosynthetic pathway uh, starts with the isoprenoid pathway uh, and then ultimately gets to lycopene. Lycopene is actually the color of tomato. Uh, then it goes on to uh, beta carotene uh, and then ultimately to retinal. And, and the retinal is, uh, allows the cells to grow phototrophically. Uh, the other branch from lycopene goes to uh, the bacteria rubrins. And these are C50 uh, pigments which have uh, function in repair of DNA damage. So we were able to isolate mutants that are white. These occur, some of them occur spontaneously. Uh, and the white mutants, when analyzed <coughs> uh, genetically, have been shown to have a defect in lycopene elongase. So that's the, the first step in the uh, conversion of lycopene into uh, Bacter rubrins. Uh, another uh, type of mutant that we've been able to isolate are retinal mutants. In this case, the phenotypes are uh, much more subtle. Uh, the cells on the left are the wild type. The cells on the right are uh, unable to make retinal. Uh, and uh, they have a defect in uh, the enzyme for beta carotene monooxygenase. And we initially um, knocked out the gene that we believe to be uh, responsible for this, which is the BRP gene. And you can see in uh, <coughs> number two that uh, the retinal is reduced, but not completely uh, gone. Uh, beta carotene is actually induced compared to the wild type. There's a second gene, it turns out, that also encodes a beta carotene monooxygenase. And when you do a double mutant, then you can see that it has knocked out retinal entirely. So we've gone on and uh, isolated other mutants, uh, the Halobacterium bacteriodopsin mutants, and uh, uh, we've isolated a BR overproducer. So this is a sucrose gradient showing uh, the relative proportion of carotenoids to bacter uh, BR. Uh, if you compare that to the next tube, which has uh, the wild type, you can see that there's a considerably lower amount of uh, BR compared to the, the carotenoids. Uh, and then we also isolated an orange mutant and colorless mutants. And when we analyze these, we see that the orange mutants have uh, an, an insertions into the uh, protein uh, gene for vector dopsin, uh, and the colorless mutants have insertions in the bat gene, for, uh, which is a regulatory gene for not just the protein, but also for the pigment. So we've done a fair amount of analysis of this type, and we're putting together the pathway for these 
uh, production of the carotenoids. And um, <clears throat> this is the portion that I, I've mentioned before. The lycopene uh, is converted to retinol, which binds to the bacteria opsin and produces BR. Uh, the, the lye and another gene rub uh, converts lycopene into bacteria rubrins. And then if you go backwards uh, for the carotenoid pathway, there are other uh, genes that are involved in uh, conversion of uh, phytoene and general general pyrophosphate into uh, lycopene. And then before that, there's a, a, a complicated pathway for uh, isoprenoid goes all the way from uh, basically acetate uh, up to general general. So uh, just to put that pathway into context, we think that this is actually a relatively simple pathway for production of pigments and may have originated fairly early in evolution. And um, the carotenoid pathway is producing both the bacteria rubrins and retinols. Uh, before the carotenoid pathway is the isoprenoid pathway, which is taking acetyl-CoA uh, uh, to uh, the general general pyrophosphate. And uh, we think that this is maybe one of the original or early biosynthetic pathways on Earth for pigments. And remember, these pigments are involved both in uh, generating uh, energy as well as protection of DNA. Uh, the, okay, I'm, this is the last slide, so. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, another branch of that pathway leads to membrane lipids. So it makes sense that under these circumstances, you would be able to generate something that looks like a protocell and produce a protein with a chromophore that would be able to generate energy for life. And this entire pathway, of course, is just a direct offshoot from central metabolism, from glycolysis and TCA. So uh, <clears throat> we think that there may, may be a temporal appearance of these pigments on Earth. Uh, the carotenoids might have appeared first. Uh, retinal pigments appeared subsequently and then ultimately the chlorophylls. And you can see that there's a uh, complementarity between the retinal pigments and the chlorophyll pigments. So um, I think I'll, I'll stop there uh, and acknowledge my uh, co-authors, Priya, uh, Victoria, and also our collaborators at uh, Kenyon College, and also thank NASA Exobiology uh, and uh, the Mirrors and uh, Summer Science programs. Thank you very much.